<laughs> All right, Guru Nation, we are here. You probably know this lady very well, Samantha Anderson. Okay. She, this young lady has been helping me with my Yuma clinical trials. Um, she started out as an intern from the CRC Academy, by the way, and future CRC Academy students or even current ones. All right. If you say, well, why not me? First of all, we have an internship for everybody, but this is probably a good way. I didn't plan on saying this. If you say, why wasn't it me? Well, that's more something you got to ask yourself because Samantha, I didn't know who Samantha was compared to any other students either, right? But when I needed somebody, and by the way, we have clients, guys and gals, especially CRC Academy interns, right? We have clients literally every week saying, hey, do you have any CRC grads in Michigan? Do you? Yesterday, I got that one. Do you have any in Chicago? Last week, we got that one. Do you got any for Dartmouth, which I found out was in New Hampshire? Uh, yesterday, I got that one. So when we get these people reaching out, right, I go to Monica and say, Monica, who is like in this area and are they actually good? Like, do they put in effort? So that's what happened when I needed somebody. I went to Monica. Hey, do you know, do you know somebody? I need a remote worker. She, it with no hesitation, Samantha came up first. So I'm like, all right, let's go. I trust Monica on that. I, we, I don't need to look at resume or anything. Just, all right, let's do it. So that's why Samantha put herself in that position. But if you are somebody in the CRC Academy or, or just in any situation like this, like, the work you put in is going to pay off at some point, right? And I think that's important to say, like, it's not like Samantha, like, knew me or anything like that, right? That, so <laughs> because people are going to think, well, I'm not lucky. It's not really about luck. Luck plays a little factors, I guess, but not really. Like, Samantha didn't get lucky. She... Worked really hard. She stood out enough to where Monica didn't even hesitate to say who's the student that I should I should hire. So, yeah, and it's I've been uh, very uh, happy with Samantha, and she actually just got hired for a real job, not for my startup. Not a real job. A real <laughs> job where you probably got a what is that a remote job too? Or are you going to go in the office? Um, so it's it's kind of a hybrid job. Okay. Uh, at the moment, because of uh, you know because of everything going on in the world, it's primarily going to be remote. Uh, but in the <laughs> I like future, that you didn't say the trigger C O V I D word to get yep, YouTube trying to help you demonetized. Out here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, See, this is why we yeah. love Samantha. Okay. <laughs> so, okay, so hybrid, but um, you do have mm -hmm. to move. Uh, yes. in order to yeah. be local. So it's like both mm -hmm. uh, yeah. hybrid. Okay. So, mm -hmm. and we can't talk details about that because it's not like a done deal where I have yeah. to sign a paper and send it back to them to verify that she's worked. But basically you got the job, your goal, mm -hmm. your background's very interesting because, and this is another, this is another great reason to have you on and we talked mm -hmm. about it a little bit but for those that missed the first interview your background is not healthcare at all no nope. nothing not even healthcare. close nope <laughs> so they could go watch that video but just give them like the you know 20 yeah. second synopsis of your background yeah I'm more than happy to um okay so my background has pretty much been in like tourism and museums that's been most of my background. My my bachelor's was in liberal studies, <laughs> like it's a bachelor of arts, Where'd not you even go? science. Uh, it's this um, all women's college called Stevens College in Columbia, Missouri. Ah, and, okay. Yeah, Art. and I actually started as a fashion. Wait, design did you grow up in that area? You grew up in Missouri. Um, I'm originally from Springfield, Missouri, and that's where I am right now as well. Okay, yeah, because I've never Came asked you. I've always been meaning to ask you. 
So yeah. you like grew up like born, raised high school, all that stuff in uh-huh. Springfield. Yep. Stayed, though uh, I did do a year, uh, a year of high school I did in Osaka, Japan. Uh, I did do ah, that. But, okay. Uh, other than that, <laughs> other than that, it was like yep, Missouri, and then I went to college in uh, at Stevens because I was going for fashion design, and they were they have one of the top programs in the country. So, um, and then by the end of it, I realized I'm like, okay, I actually don't want to be in the fashion industry. So what am I going to do? So like my final year, I switched, <laughs> I switched wow. my major to just general liberal studies. <laughs> that was the best year because I already crazy. had all my credit. So yeah. fashion. So like your interests mm-hmm. were what? Like the actual fashion or like the. Uh, oh, I did. A, like it, that was a really intensive program. Um, like if you want me to make a garment for you, I can make it. I can draft the pattern. I can. Huh. <laughs> I can actually sew it together yeah it's it was like the whole thing um so to me like fashion Mm -hmm. my wife's a makeup artist too she was a social worker but she's also a makeup artist yeah that's awesome yeah so like the mind is a little different Mm -hmm. like I saw her actually you and her have a lot in common because it in the uh social working field you know you're not really using creativity um, it's mm-hmm. just client interactions, you know, maybe to some extent you're using creativity, like when it comes to like conflict resolution and yeah, maybe like de-escalating, um, a client, these, these were psychiatric patients, but okay. in the makeup space, she's like, you know, all into it. Like she has an idea and then she can like oh, just piece it together. Yeah. And it seems yeah. like that's similar to you. Cause you're yeah. like a very organized person. Usually. The creative types are disorganized from my experiences. Yeah. You you can find that for sure. <laughs> it's pretty common. Yeah, no, but but no, you're exactly right. I mean, I would go from like having to make designs like from imagination <laughs> all mm. the way through to uh, a final product. And yeah, by the way, I would love to see your wife's portfolio. I want to see it. Oh, uh, she's like that's yeah. so exciting. <laughs> When you, do, when you do the Creo training, ask her about that. She'd be happy to show you that. She's had yeah, like a man. magazine. She's had one magazine cover. Not like a big magazine, but it was like an industry um, magazine. That's awesome. Yeah. I okay. was actually there for that photo shoot. Like, Good job, Dora. That's amazing. Yeah, That's good amazing. job, Dora. <laughs> she has no idea she's <laughs> on awesome. the podcast. She doesn't watch, so you got to tell her in oh. person. Um, okay. <laughs> but yeah, I always thought that was like an interesting like. Um, yeah. Because I, you know, I didn't realize that about you um, until now mm-hmm. when I asked you. Because I, yeah. when I think of you, I just think, all right, super organized. Like, mm-hmm. she won't lose things. Thanks. You know, if I send you Thanks. an email, like, it's going to get filed, unlike me or others. So I never, like, you know, realized, yeah. like, you basically, like, switch your brain a lot? Or how do you... Well, okay, so this is what's funny. Okay, so I go from like fashion design back in what, like 2008 to 2012. Uh, and then I switched over to more tourism. Um, like, you know, I, I worked on a, I'll do this in order. Okay, are you ready? Yeah. So uh, I, I graduate college. I went to Greece and I got teaching English as a foreign language certification in Greece. Wow. <laughs> but then I couldn't get a job. So then I just like lived in London for a few months with all the money I had saved over. Horrible uh, food. All my savings. London, horrible food. Sent it. <laughs> and the Indian food is incredibly good in London. All uh, right, um, Indian food probably then, is. Uh, yeah, then I got a I got a job in sales. So I was the promotional ambassador on uh, the Radiance of the Seas for Royal Caribbean. Um, wow. So lived on a cruise ship for like seven months. <laughs> I and had you were, lived on I, a cruise ship. That's think, crazy. Mm-hmm. And I, I was that person. If you've ever been on a cruise, when you walk through like the duty free shops, if there's a person on a microphone trying to sell you like the deal of the day, that was me. Uh, <laughs> and the thing is, on, on cruise ships, like you work for, in my case at least, I worked seven days a week. I think in seven months, I had four days off in total. Uh, and my minimum wow. hours were eight, and my max were sixteen. A day? So. A day. Mm -hmm. Yep. (laughs) Oh yeah. It's yeah. (laughs) It's so when you go on a cruise, like those, (laughs) those folks are working really hard, but you get like perks, like you get to eat the food and all that, like the buffets, whatever you want. 
Uh-uh. No, they don't let you. No, we have you have you have your own like mess halls, and depending on what your uh, depending on what your job is, you get a different mess hall. So like, wow. and they so have the tiers. food that the customers eat is not the same no, that you guys no. eat. It's um, not as good. You can if in fact what's what's funny is if you're not of a certain job level, like in my case it was something called staff. So I was staff instead of crew, if I remember right. It's been a while. Um, because I was staff, I was allowed to eat in like the restaurants where you have to pay, like if they have a sushi restaurant on board or like a Brazilian restaurant. So I I was allowed to eat there, but I had to pay for it. But if you were crew, you weren't even allowed to eat in that, like you couldn't eat in the restaurant. Um, wow. Yeah. So wow. it's, it's very much a thing of like titles, titles are a big deal. And you have, if you uh-huh. leave your cabin at any point, like you got to put a name tag on, you don't have a window. You are almost always, I mean, unless you're in management, you're always under the water. So (laughs) it's, it's, it's a whole thing, (laughs) but um, sounds pleasant. Yeah. Yeah. But (laughs) I I get so seasick. Oh, you know what? It got to the point. What's funny enough. It got to the point where I wasn't used to normal ground. Wow. Like I, (laughs) I distinctly remember this moment I'm walking around. uh, What was it? Where was it? (sighs) Canada. I was walking around Canada, somewhere in Canada. Where was I? It's again, it's been a long time. Anyway, I was walking around this mall and I just had this moment of feeling really <laughs> discombobulated because the ground was not moving. Yeah. And I had to actually stand still just to like get my bearings because so, well, that's the, crazy. the ground was too steady. Um, but I, I will say, actually, here, I'll I'll do it like this. I think this is a good idea because from people I've talked to, like a lot of people think that if they don't have any experience in like medicine or clinical research or any clinical anything or or even just science because this was me too um that they won't be able to to transition over into the clinical research and i can tell you that's not true like you can uh funny enough i uh i don't know if you actually remember, know this dan i sent you a linkedin message like months ago mm-hmm. uh asking you if uh like explaining that i have this masters in tourism and i don't know if i would even be hireable and you did a video on your youtube <laughs> channel oh wow my message and it's it's funny because like to see the difference between that video and and now we're like Wow. No, no problem. Was I spot on? Tell the truth. I don't remember this, but was I like, right? Yeah. Or I told you 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 couldn't do it. (laughs) Yeah, no, you no, you said I could. (laughs) You said like if you have transferable skills for sure. And uh, actually what your um your main point in your video that I remember was like, if you're telling yourself you can't, then you won't Mm, be able to. That's true. Like you have to have the right attitude and go into it with the right attitude. And and a hundred percent you're right. And so um what I, what I think would be kind of nice, I'm more than happy to explain like the transferable skills I saw in my own jobs so that maybe like anybody listening or watching can recognize some of those in theirs. So, you know, like uh, let's take my bachelor's. Yeah. Uh, I was incredibly organized in my, in my program. Like I was very specific with numbers. I had to make sure, you know, when they would go through and look at the patterns that we would make, right. To, to form the garments, they would take rulers and they would actually measure to see, like, are you one eighth of an inch off on this pattern? And they would grade you based on that. Um, so for me, I was very detail oriented in that regard. Like I had to make sure that my patterns were perfect because I didn't want to have any like grades taken off. <laughs> I didn't want marks. <laughs> so mm. uh, so like I always made sure to keep up with that. I I studied a lot like I took way more than the normal amount of hours you're supposed to take in a semester and I always made sure I got like A's every time I've I've always been that person (laughs) so uh so you know it's kind of if if you recognize that you do work hard and you might be more detail oriented than you think just anybody listening like really think about things because again like in order to do my drawings for example right I'm designing things I would put a ridiculous amount of detail into those drawings. I was very, I was able to focus really heavily, right? And then I was able to transition that over into doing all the math skills required to actually make the pattern. Uh, So those are things that you might not recognize will be good in this industry because you'll think, well, yeah, like I like drawing little details in my drawings, but 
not everybody likes doing super highly detailed things. <laughs> so that's one thing. Uh, the work on the cruise ship, I mean, obviously that showed that like I was able to be really flexible and work ridiculously hard <laughs> because mm. because of the hours. Did those come uh, up in your interview for the job that you basically okay. got? So I did kind of a more of a summary um, for the for my interview. But yeah, these are traits that I was able like if they had asked me, like I already had an answer for every job. If they had asked me specifically, like, hey, we see this one job. Uh, how is that connected? Because it's on your resume. <laughs> it's on your CV. So how yeah. is this connected? Uh, but they they didn't ask. Actually, uh, in my interviews, they they really liked that I had this really broad, super different background. Um, Did they and, ask about you, yeah. clinical trials? Like what you, what you do there? Yeah. <laughs> oh, That's yeah. probably what they were interested in. Like, you know, the more, yeah. the most recent, most relevant experience. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Wow. But, but yeah. I, wasn't even, I think if I had had more clinical experience, they probably would have asked me more uh, specific questions about previous jobs. But they did definitely mention my previous jobs. They were like, this is really interesting. Like we I, I know that one thing they liked is they liked that it was it seemed um, how do I put this like worldly. I had like a worldly view with it. Mm. Right. Um, they I, I one of my interviewers actually told me straight up like. It, it shows me that you're able to see a big picture. So I thought it was cool. So uh, I'll just, I'll just continue. I'm sorry if, if anyone listening is bored hearing about my resume, but no, so, uh, so like <laughs> from the cruise ship, I lived in Hawaii for a little bit. I lived on a commune. That's not on my resume, but I just wanted to see, it was like the anthropologist to me was like, do communes still exist? If yes, what's that like? And that was, that was very interesting. Wait, what's like a the commune? Hawaiian jungle. Uh, like a like a communal living situation like when you think oh. about uh, like the stereotypical image of like hippies in the 1960s you know? oh, okay, okay. Mm-hmm. like bring yeah, your own so. flip-flops the shower type of thing yeah <laughs> yeah oh, like okay. that. It, in this case it was like you know I was out in the jungle mainly harvesting different gardens and things like that and I I helped with aquaponics wow. and stuff like that yeah but it, that was definitely <laughs> interesting I was like taking notes the whole legit like an anthropologist just for myself I'm like taking notes every day like look how interesting this so is. do you have like um do you have friends or colleagues mm-hmm. or maybe like former classmates that you still keep in touch with not from mm-hmm. CRC Academy but from the other yeah. world uh fashion yeah. travel mm-hmm. all this stuff where mm-hmm. Maybe they look at clinical research and they're like, oh, I don't know if I could do that. That seems boring. Like the, there's um, that, that's yeah. like an attitude that I see a lot too. Mm-hmm. And I, th- it's hard to explain that it's actually not boring. Like Desiree, you know, our employee that, you know, yeah. she thought it would be boring too. And then on her first day, she's like, oh, I could definitely see this is not boring. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you. So um, two of my best friends in the world, uh, one of them comes from, she has a background in dance, like, and banking. <laughs> she she works for, she's worked for multiple banks. So like, again, not clinical. Uh, the other one, she has a bachelor's in, um, in theater management and also has experience working as like the head of an apartment complex. And um, now she's doing things like making photo books. Uh, both of them, I am, <laughs> are almost completely convinced to move over into clinical research now because I've been telling them about my work with you at Yuma Clinical Trials. And I was telling them about the CRC Academy and just how much I enjoy it. Like how, like it's, it's enjoyable. It's going to lead to an actual solid job, you know, Hmm. that that pays you enough that you can live. (laughs) So what's the most Uh, attractive thing about it? Like to them, if you, you know, they're not on here, so you could be honest, like, is it the money? Is it the stability? What is it? I think it's a I think it's a combination. I think part of it is I would say the money and the stability are a big a big thing. But another thing, for example, you know, I had one of my friends watch your five hour video, right? And that that was pretty cool because she she watched it in one sitting. Wow. And <laughs> yeah, That's and insane. she called me. Yeah, she called me later the, that day and was able to recite like. She told me everything you'd said in there. She wow. had all of the acronyms memorized. Wow. Like she told me the entire history of the ICF, like everything. She just absorbed it like a sponge. And she told me, she's like, yeah, you know, at first I, I, she didn't know much. She's like, you know, at first I didn't, 
I don't know about clinical research. Like that's not something I particularly think about. I didn't know how it worked. She said, but I watched that video and you know, if I had gotten bored, I would have closed it and I didn't get bored. Like, you know, she was doing other things with her hands, but she was listening. She's like, I never got bored in that video. And everything that was talked about, I thought was fascinating. And I also thought about like, Hey, that actually seems like that wouldn't be ridiculously hard for me. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Um, where it's like, you know, it would be something where you're almost able to relax a little bit in your job just because you're not overwhelmed with the, the difficulty. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. But hmm. she also, again, she's one of these people who's very detail oriented. She's really good at, um, at keeping uh, multitasking and like keeping tasks in order. So that's part of the reason I'm trying to convince them. <laughs> both of them both okay of them. so you haven't like fully yeah. convinced them yet oh, yeah no, they're, they're, they're pretty send this well video convinced. to them like yeah i will <laughs> crc <laughs> academy you know crc yeah, shout academy out, shout out monica. kylie and leah now you got to join the academy kylie but, and leah will have monica reach out yeah, yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> no they, they've even said like they um they really want to look into doing the academy now because okay. they had never even thought about this as a job option and it's I, I think a lot of people are intimidated. Just I was by mm -hmm. the idea of like, oh, clinical, like I don't know anything about medicine. You know, you send me <laughs> it has it has been a trip for me to try to read uh, medical history reports. Mm. Uh, I'm I'm better at it now. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, like I had never seen a medical history like I'd never seen it until my my work with you. Wow. Um, but and but now like I can I can read it. But, you know, that was something where it's like I, I had never seen an EKG result. Right. Even now, I don't know how to read that. I'm yeah. going to be completely honest. Guru Nation, I don't know how to read an EKG. Like, <laughs> Even I I'm don't. I bought a book on it, actually. In 17 yeah. years, I've never had to. I, I know when it looks bad and when it looks good, but I don't know details like QT, QR, prolongation. Mm -hmm. um, I bought yeah. a book so I could like try to do that, but I've, I've never had to. That's why I never really yeah. got into that. Yeah. And that's the thing. I think, again, at least in my case, there was a lot of like, well, there's things I don't know here. Uh, there was also this thought for me where it's like, but I'm not a scientist. Like, mm. how could I do this if I'm not a scientist? My background is in arts and tourism. Like, how? <laughs> <laughs> and, um, but really, like, okay, so something that I, I figured out during the CRC Academy, because my husband, uh, my husband, Daniel, is also involved in clinical research. Right. Uh, he, he did the CRA Academy with Dan. So he discovered um, research first. Is that how well, you got been, introduced to it? Yeah. So Daniel's been in clinical, like interested in clinical research since his undergrad. Okay. Um, okay. So he's been, you know, 10 years. That's been his goal is to like, be in clinical research. Um, and so, yeah, I was introduced to it through, through my husband. Um, and for multiple, for like two years, he kept telling me, you need to get into clinical research. And I was like, no, that's not my thing. I mean, <laughs> I did my master's in to sustainable tourism. So that was your yeah. initial reaction mm -hmm. too, just that, like yeah, most people. That was my initial reaction. I was like this, I'm like, really like, come on. I, my background doesn't make any sense for it. Are you kidding huh. me? <laughs> like I'm not a scientist and and he would go out of his way to be like no you think more scientifically than you realize right he's like even if you have a background in this other this other like you think like a scientist I was like oh whatever like sure uh but uh after being in the CRC academy I'm like oh okay like I do think mm. <laughs> like a scientist oh okay this explains some of my like more perfectionistic do you think so um, do you think that you're organized mm -hmm. because you like the subject like you know um, i think yeah. a lot of people like you said pay attention to detail i think actually mm -hmm. everyone's capable of that if they actually like what yeah. they're doing um mm -hmm. yeah I mean, I, I could see that definitely being the case. Uh, I will say in my regard, that's actually, yeah. Okay. Good point. Um, like, if do I you focus on something? I are will, you... I will get very attention or I will get detail oriented for sure. If my attention is there. And especially if I'm interested, 
Um, but I also am just kind of that person otherwise. But yeah, I mean, you're right. If I was doing something that I really don't care about at all, <laughs> I don't <Yeah>. know <laughs> how how that would go. I mean, I probably would still be because I just am that way. But I definitely would say that you there's a certain level of like organization that you can teach yourself, mm. like for sure. It's yeah. it's kind of like um you do you know Marie Kondo? No. Um, she does a. Uh, she she has a Netflix show. I, I'm just forgetting her. She's I like Ozark. Organizer. They're from is they're like from Ozark? Missouri. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I'm in the Ozarks. There really? You know? yeah. Seriously? Wow. Yeah. I'm in the Ozark. yeah. <laughs> Welcome to my life. That's awesome. Uh, but, uh, yeah. So she has a show, um, and and books that are about like um, what is it? I somebody in the comments is probably going to be like, come on, it's the something of tidying up it's like the unbelievable joy of tidying up but that's not the title you'll oh, okay. find it marie kondo uh but she reading those books really helped me to create organized plans for like keeping my household organized right like mm. she goes through even how to fold clothes to put them in a drawer in the best way you know little things where it's teaching yourself little little um i don't know little ways of doing things right that if you do it enough, it becomes habitual. Yeah? yeah. And so I would definitely say with a lot of my work that I do for you, for example, things that I do that can easily be taught and can become habit. Like even just the way you sort your emails can become habitual. You just have to get into the practice. And so, yeah, there's a lot where you can train yourself to be more organized. Um, mm -hmm. There's other things that I've, I've noticed some people, for example, do not like the super tedious stuff. So uh, I helped to write a book um, at the beginning of the pandemic um, on how tourism can bounce back after the pandemic. I wrote it with really? like seven. There were, yeah, there were seven of us. So wow. six other authors, all in different parts of the world, uh, all different uh, nationalities. What is this book called? Oh, oh, it's, it's, I'm not going to sell it. <laughs> it's called well, no, I Travel read it. Again. It's called When We Travel Again, but it's not like available on Amazon or anything. Damn it, it you was... got to send me one now. When okay. we travel I'll, I'll send you the book. again. I mean, um, part of it is a little bit, I was mainly an editor and I helped to write the US section. But okay. in that book, for example, you know, I, I had my peers who were not native English speakers, though their English was fantastic. But, you know, um, sometimes when you're writing in a language that isn't your your first language, uh, you can run into issues with, you know, like grammar, uh, punctuation, things like that. So what I mainly did is I went through and I, I edited the book with my with these peers. Um, and we we kind of rewrote full sections so that it had the same sound. The tone was the same throughout the whole book. It didn't sound like we were switching between authors constantly. Um, and I can tell you right now, <laughs> uh, not everybody likes doing things like that. Like even the other American was like, I don't even, don't even send me that. I don't want to edit anything. Like wow. I hate, I, I'm going to go through a paragraph and I'm not even going to be paying enough attention to see that they missed a comma because I yeah. don't like doing that kind of thing. Right. So if, so depending on what you're doing in clinical research, if it requires skills like that, right, where you have to notice if someone missed a comma or someone put the wrong name or anything like that. If you really hate doing things like that in your daily life, maybe don't go for the clinical research jobs that require that specific skill. Like, mm. cause there's plenty of things you can do in clinical research that don't require that level of tedium. <laughs> yeah. Um, like coordinator, you know, coordinator. Mm -hmm. yep. I don't think you need that level of detail, no. uh, but like, you need to be no. careful, you know, with like medications and things like that, like the yeah. protocol, as far as the being uh, paying attention mm -hmm. to every detail of the protocol. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So there's like a hierarchy, I guess, of a mm -hmm. organization that yeah. I'm actually still trying to figure out. The reason we haven't figured out is because the industry changes, evolves. Now we have like hybrid mm -hmm. e-source, e-reg. Things never yeah. stay the same. Yeah. And and that is going to add a whole nother level because I mean, exactly what you were saying. If you're more doing patient fronting things, right? Um, that's not going to require the same 
type of organization as doing all regulatory, right? Right. Um, right. Or writing a protocol, <laughs> right? The, it's very different. But I, I mean, again, there's a lot of these things people don't recognize in their jobs. Okay, I'm just going to do speed run through the rest of my of my work just to give an idea because I want people to understand like you really don't have to. And I mean speed run. I'm just going to list like, uh, okay, so I worked in the costume shop at Bush Gardens Williamsburg making costumes for the theme park. Wow. Uh, and and here's the thing again, little tasks that I did that looking back on it now, I'm like, okay, like, there you go. They usually asked me to do the physical organization. So like I would go up to where we had the fabric and they, there's over a thousand bolts of fabric. And they knew that of all the people in the shop, I was the only one that was willing to sort by like color and fabric type. So I would spend, you know, a week organizing a thousand bolts of fabric. So, you know, if you're working a job where you you do things like that, even if it's hands-on organization like that, like this is physical object. If you know that you're good with that kind of skill, that can go far. I mean, even, even being able to do like inventory in a store or like a yeah. grocery store or, or a store, if you're good with inventory and you don't mind doing it, you're probably going to do great in clinical research. Um, like, you know, I would even sort the how many safety pins we had, <laughs> you know, but in, wow. at why? The time, because you like that or mm -hmm. because you yeah. felt like you like, had to do it. I, I was the only person in the shop that was like, Oh sweet. I can go and relax by sorting things. <laughs> <laughs> really? Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I liked doing that kind of thing. And I was, I was good at it. My boss recognized that. So it was like, yeah, we're going to send Samantha to go upstairs and deal with that. Wow. Nobody else wants to sort all the safety pins. Uh, but you know, I, I found that relaxing. So, you know, even being able to just put on headphones and, and do it while listening to music or audiobooks. So that was something that at the time, I didn't think anything about that at all. Yeah, I was yeah. like, oh, well, yeah, that's because I'm, I don't know. I just like doing that. But no, like that actually can tie over into clinical wow. research. So I remember um, now yeah. when I did your, um, I gave you like all maximum scores when I did your Thanks uh of, yeah you deserve it um <laughs> okay <My reference? laughs> yeah so when they yeah. asked me when they asked mm -hmm. me name something that she could improve <laughs> yeah i actually didn't have an answer i really didn't so we didn't work together that long i'm sure, <laughs> sure. i would have <laughs> seen something if i'm nitpicky but like what is it that you think mm -hmm. are your weakness maybe for me yeah okay if i really have to think about it and this is a little bit difficult to say because I think it completely depends on what I'm doing and what the environment is, right? I, I think it's completely like subjective. Uh, but you know, um, depending on depending on what the task is or what the job is, like sometimes I can get like overcommitted. <laughs> this is a genuine thing, <laughs> mm. like where I um, like. I am so committed to wanting to make sure that I get things completely accurate, really well done that like I can end up kind of overwhelming myself with the pressure. Like I can put pressure on myself that maybe my boss isn't putting on me, but I'm putting it on myself. Right. Um, because I want to do a good job. <laughs> so what do so, you think that like, like long-term yeah. that's um, you would like burn out you think, or um, it has in, in different situations, it has happened. Like that before so that's something that you know i i'm in my 30s now and i've been working on that for over a decade to, right. to try to kind of calm that down because again if i'm not getting the pressure from an external source i don't need to give it to myself <laughs> that's that's silly what but that's do I uh, <laughs> that's that's like um, your that's the reason why you also have a lot of strengths it's the same thing it's like yeah. me when people mm -hmm. ask me well what's my i don't do job interviews anymore but like now yeah. that I asked you, I thought of it for myself. It's, mm -hmm. I think yeah. it's, I overshare, um, yeah. too, like way too much. Right. But that's why I have a YouTube, TikTok podcast. Mm -hmm. Like that's also like yeah. part of the strength. And I tend yeah. to not say no. Like I have, a, yeah. I still have a hard time saying no when people ask me. That's stuff. me too. Me too. <laughs> but yeah. those are strengths I, too, because that. like mm -hmm. that also is why you are successful in certain realms mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. Like, 
Mm-hmm. All right. Good answer. Exactly. Good answer. No. So, um, oh, but to, to get back to this, and again, I'm trying to speed run. I promise. I've just well, we have time. Of... My ten o'clock okay. call. Oh, they're gay. We have like a few um, minutes, but yeah, let maybe speed run because the... okay, I'll speed run. We have a um, guy that wants case... to start a site. Can you believe that these guys? Oh, they don't know, have no wow. idea, Samantha. I'm about to get on this yeah. call and tell him what's up. I'm gonna say, yeah. do you realize I have no life at all right That's now true. <laughs> as a site owner? Yeah. Dan works all the time. I will say Dan works Damn. all the time. I can send him a text at 8 p.m. like asking <laughs> him about something on the EDC and he'll respond. Like I don't expect him Boom. to respond. He responds. So- Strength and weakness. Strength <laughs> and weakness. Yeah. But um, so okay. Uh feel free, anybody that's interested, you can go look at my LinkedIn. You're welcome to reach oh, yeah. out to me. Underneath, to, underneath. Yeah, you'll put in my LinkedIn. You're welcome to reach out to me to ask me if there are other jobs you see that I've worked that you're like, hey, I worked something similar. What what would you say is a tie-in there? Like I've worked at two different living history museums. Uh I worked in marketing <laughs> in South Africa. I did my I did a uh a postgrad degree in South Africa in development studies, uh, wow. not childhood development, like development of you know in more like government development uh organizational development stuff like that the postgrad at nelson mandela university um i and then i wow. did my master's in spain uh my master's is a master's in sustainable tourism destinations and regional tourism planning so wow. yeah it was basically like an mba but focused specifically on tourism on and tourism. sustainability and tourism yeah so uh and then i worked at um at a like a tourism tech company so think kind of like an Expedia kind of thing where it's an online platform I worked there in, doing contracts in Spain um and again even though I had done all of that and I've, I've worked as an at-home caregiver as well but that that's a little bit different uh I also did pretty much all of like the majority of the paperwork that had to be done for my husband's um like my, my husband has immigrated and I did pretty much all of the paperwork for him. <laughs> you were the paralegal. <laughs> paralegal. Yeah. I, I actually, you know, what's funny before I decided to go the clinical research route, I was looking at possibly becoming a paralegal because, you know, the tourism industry completely decimated. Yeah. Um, and in the past couple of years. <laughs> so do you think you back. changed, do you think you changed the industry because of COVID? Yeah, actually, I think I think that was a huge part of it. And I'm not saying because like I think a lot of it was I finally had a moment to stop and really look at what what I was doing and where I was going. And the thing is, like tourism industry is great, but like don't expect stability and don't expect pay that can make you live like don't even expect full time jobs. Like it's it's very much a thing where it depends on who, you know, and how long you stay in a place and what you're really looking at. Like, it's very, it's very like this. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and there was one time I was visiting my husband in Spain. That's where we met. I was visiting him before he came over here. And we finally got him in the U S cause he finally got his visa. Uh, and he was in the CRA Academy at the time uh, just to do something while waiting. <laughs> and he had printed off work he was doing for the internship. And like, Okay, so I didn't look at exactly what he was doing. Okay, so there wasn't any breach of like CDA. I I don't want anyone to think he was showing me like everything about a study that I'm not supposed to see. But I was I was looking at him doing his work for the CRA Academy. And I was like, what is that? (laughs) What are you doing? And he just briefly explained like, this is what this page is. Like, this is what this page is. This is what this page is. I'm going between these pages and making sure that everything matches. And I'm making sure everything's filled out. And he, he kind of explained that process. And I'm like, oh, that looks fun. Like that actually looks fun. I, that looks like something I would enjoy. Like it's almost to me. And you I had no like, idea it was ugly. cancer, like any of that. Yeah. Like that didn't matter. I had no idea what I, I didn't know what it was. Cause See, I was a lot of people, they join the CRA Academy mm-hmm. only because it's an oncology internship, at least right now as the time of this video. So yeah. for you, it didn't matter what it was. It mm-hmm. was just nope. the, the process of doing yeah. of, of what he was and, doing. Yeah. And the thing was that, so he, this was this was after he had already been telling me for two years that I I think like a scientist, 
right? Mm. And so finally, I'm looking at this. I'm like, that looks fun. And he goes, you know, a lot of people wouldn't say that looks fun. So I really think you should consider it. And then I started watching more of your videos and your book and and all that good stuff. And I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm going to try the CRC Academy out. And then we'll see. If nothing else, I can have it as a backup plan. If, if I take the CRC Academy and I realize, oh, I don't really like this, I'll go back into tourism, I can always fall back on clinical research because I've gotten this certification. Yeah. And then I, I did the Academy and I, I really enjoyed it. Like everything that Monica talked about, uh, I, I liked how it was set up because it was something where you really could kind of do it at your own, not do it at your own pace exactly, but it didn't take up like a ridiculous amount of time every yeah, week. Yeah, they're bite-sized uh, mm-hmm. bite-sized, uh, yeah. actionable yeah, but it things. Was, but it was thorough, you know, mm. it was really, really thorough. And the, uh, like, that, if I hadn't done that, I don't know, I would have, actually, how would I put this? I would have been very confused working for you. <laughs> if I had uh, just I don't think it would be possible. No, I would have been like, what is happening? You so know what? It, it I really take that back. If, if you didn't do that, if you didn't do mm-hmm. the CRC Academy with your background, yeah. Yeah, it would be impossible for you to work remotely for me. I don't think yes. somebody like you, if you lived mm-hmm. in Yuma, I can yeah. train you like I'm doing with Desiree. Mm-hmm. But remotely, yeah. there's no way it wouldn't be. Yeah, like it wouldn't even be worth my time to do that because that's why yeah. we have the CRC Academy to teach people the basic exactly. stuff, right? Exactly. Yeah. No, that's so, a good point. That's so, good point. like, I mean, there are a lot of skills that that you, the listener might have that you don't recognize are actually applicable. Even if you have public speaking skills, like the when I worked in the museums, even that where like if you have any experience where you have to learn something and then tell it to other people, because that's what I did in museums. I would learn the whole history of like prostitution and the Klondike gold rush in, in Skagway, Alaska. Wow. And Sounds I would learn that uh, yeah, it was a really fun job. <laughs> I got to dress up as a madam and like go around giving tours as a wow. madam from 1898. That was fun. But, uh, you know, even just reading all the information and having to write something that you then conveyed to other people. Right. And mm-hmm. in a way that they understood, like there are lots of jobs that require skills like that, even if it's just sales or or tourism or anything. Those skills do come in handy in clinical research, especially I would say if you're patient facing. Now I'm not because I'm remote, but like right. if I was, right. that's a skill that's going to be really helpful. Like uh, if you're comfortable with things like that, having someone do an ICF, not going to be a problem. Like and sitting down with the patient and really like helping to answer mm-hmm, all their questions. Mm-hmm. So, you know, well, that's but a again, good skill a that you bring skill. up. You know, because I, I knew you would eventually get a, like a full time job, and at best we would have you as part-time, which thank you for yeah. continuing <laughs> sticking around. But I was starting to think, you know, for you mm-hmm. or somebody like you who maybe doesn't get the job or maybe they don't want jobs like one of our other interns mm-hmm. right now, mm-hmm. there yeah. are actually are patient facing things you can do remotely, especially when they're using electronic patient reported outcomes and you mm-hmm. need somebody, you were in that SIV, you basically need yeah. somebody to check on those patients every single day and say, hey, you know what? Are you sure this is the score you put? Because it's I see some inconsistencies. Like that's patient yeah. facing. You can just get on the phone and call them and mm-hmm. you're seeing everything electronically. So I yeah. think it's going to be interesting how this industry shifts uh, because 100%. of all the digital stuff that's ha- that's that, that's being opened yeah. and, and facilitated yeah. by these tools. No, and I, I would say 100% that's, yeah. Because I mean, think about it, like even 10 years ago, I don't, I doubt that I would be able to do this kind of e-reg position. <laughs> like This was unheard of. Yeah. yeah. Unheard and of. So, and that's the other thing. If 10 if years ago, 2012. Me, mm-hmm. Yeah, no, this would have been unheard yeah. of. Um, yeah. Scanners weren't even that good back then. Like to be yeah. <laughs> just to scan <laughs> <I know>. things. <laughs> it's true. But I mean, uh, and actually that's another good point. Like. If if you're sitting there not knowing if you have skills, if you have any kind of computer skills, like hmm. there you go. Honestly, there you go. Like, especially if you're the kind of person, if if you have anything that is genuine computer science, like a computer science background where you know how to code, like you're not gonna have a problem in clinical research. Yeah. Um, but even if you don't, even if it's just as simple as like 
you know, you know how to use Word and you know how to use Excel and you know how to use online platforms, any kind of online platform. If you've used Salesforce for a job, or even if you're really good at Facebook or something like that, where you know how to kind of navigate a website to get it to do what you want, that is really helpful Mm. (laughs) when it comes to doing a remote job in this industry. And, And I can say that. I mean, I know I'm still pretty new, but like I've been doing work for you for four months. Um, and Four my months. new job. Wow. Feels yeah. like a year. I know it feels like <laughs> a lot longer, but, uh, and I, and I will say like, I have learned a lot just from that four months of work with Dan hundred yeah. percent. Like, and I, I I'm going to say like, Dan, fantastic boss. He's such a good boss. He's such a good dude. <laughs> king of forward, the king of forwards. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you know, like it's, there are a lot of skills that you can easily translate over that you might not even think like the friends that I'm trying to convince. Yeah. Like Mm. my friend who's in banking, I'm like a lot of the stuff that you do in banking is not going to be that different than the stuff that you do here. Like, yeah. Okay, cool. They, they like you in your job because you're very good at math. Great. Guess where you also sometimes do occasional math. (laughs) Like, you know, cause even, even just the simple, like, okay, you're giving IP to a patient right? You're giving the investigational product for the patient for the first time. Let's say it's a bottle of pills. Yeah. And you're giving it to them in the afternoon. And you know that this bottle of pills has 30 pills in it. And they have to take one in the morning and one in the evening, and you're going to see them again in a week. And they bring it back. And now you have to count the number of pills to make sure that they actually stuck to the process. Yeah. Yeah, They they took the proper amount. There, you are actually doing math, <laughs> even if you don't think that you're doing math. And you know what makes you know, that difficult is that yeah. it's not that act. Mm-hmm. It's that yeah. when that coordinator is doing it, okay, that mm-hmm. patient returned yeah. the bottle. That yeah. same coordinator, I know because it's me right now, has yeah. another patient in the other room with an ECG, like electrodes mm-hmm. on, even if they have yeah. an assistant, all right? The assistant's yeah. going to be like, all right, I'm done. What do you do? Oh, uh, let's go transmit it real quick. All right. So now I have the bottle in my hand. Now I go in over there. I tell this patient, wait, yeah. wait. Now when I'm doing this, mm-hmm. my PI comes and says, hey, I only have 10 minutes. Like, where's yeah. where do I sign? So now yeah. I got to go back. Hopefully I still have mm-hmm. the bottle in my hand. Right. Yeah, hopefully. Uh, I mean, PI is getting yeah. pissed. All right. Mm-hmm. Now. Also, in this time, CRAs are yeah. bombarding you with things it's like, hey, we need this, 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 mm-hmm. and that. Now you yeah. get the PI. Hopefully, one of those things is not what the PI signed because now after he leaves, you mm-hmm. got to get him again. So multitask yeah. plus math, like yes. all this stuff you brought mm-hmm. up. It's exactly. just, that's high pressure. Um, yes, I that, think. that is. That is 100%. That's high pressure. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's every I, day. I, and now yeah. you want to join me on this call where I tell this guy uh, to convince him not to be a site owner or should we convince <laughs> him to be a site owner? <laughs> sure. I'm happy. I'm happy to join. Let's do it's, it. It's, sure. But I, I mean, it's, I, I do have a few takeaways that I would like to put in this oh, yeah. podcast. Let's, let's case, wrap it up properly. Too like, bad yeah. Guru Nation because can't join is, us on this call. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. But so, you know, it, it is one of these things too, where it's like, if you can form organizational processes, like every time I get a bottle of, and I'm not saying you specifically, I'm just saying maybe a person, right? Like you get handed the bottle of pills. If you have, I, if I were in your spot, I would carry sticky notes with me everywhere. And every time something happens, I would write it on the sticky note and attach it to the object to remind myself later. Okay. I need to do that. Like yeah. when I do stuff, stuff for you remotely. Yeah. I, um, like I organize my email inbox. I know Monica has discussed that she she'll put different colors. She'll actually put yeah, tabs in different color colors. Code. Yeah, I I don't do that. Um, I I will add like, like labels because I use Gmail. So I'll add a label if I have time. But if I don't have time, what I do is every single email that I know I need to do something associated with it, I I star it, right? So then all I have to do is go to my, my star mail, <laughs> my star box. And I can see it there. And the moment that I'm done with it, boom, I unstar it. So that helps me a lot to keep that organized. I also, like, sometimes we've had times where, you know, like all four studies are asking us to do something within a week or like yeah. a day. Yeah. So in those instances, I'll bring up, you know, like a to-do, uh, a to-do app. And I'll literally just type it in as quickly as I can, just abbreviated so I know how to read it. Um, 
just to add it to the task so I don't forget, right? So there's like little things you can do in your own organization. So yeah, it's, but those are things, again, like those can be learned. They can be become we're, habits. We're going to need a part two. Samantha, I'm going to call okay. you right now. Um, congratulations. Once it's official, we'll Thank do you. another, we'll do a part two. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, everybody go follow on LinkedIn, a link underneath the video and in the show notes, Samantha, yeah. stay on the line. Thank you so much for coming on everybody. Yeah. Thank you for watching, listening and catch y'all later. Bye-bye. Thanks.